Welcome to the Biopharma Finder how-to videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to load a new protein sequence to the software. Open the software. On the home page, you'll see an option called Protein Sequence Manager. Click there. The Protein Sequence Manager page will appear. If you have proteins already loaded into the software, they'll show up here in this table. To add a new protein, click New, and the following box will appear. The first step will be to import your protein sequence from a FASTA file, or you can enter the protein sequence manually using the Manual Input Protein Sequence area. Here you can type amino acids residues in the space provided and push the Apply button and then you can also name the chain or name the protein. Here I'll demonstrate how to bring in a import a protein sequence from a FASTA file. Click this button and you'll browse for a FASTA file. Here is an example FASTA file and this is for an antibody so I'll highlight the FASTA file, click open, and over here under the protein se sequence map page image you'll see I have a light chain and a heavy chain. The name from the FASTA file is automatically read into the software, so you have a name of your protein. You can categorize this. You can categorize this using any um, terms that you'd like to use, but you could say peptide mapping, for example, if this was a protein sequence you wanted to use for peptide mapping, or you could change it to intact analysis, or perhaps this might be your standard protein. The software will automatically calculate the monotopic mass and the average mass for all of the proteins that are in part of the, the FASTA file that were imported into the software. So when you look at this, you'll see that the light chain, if you want to see the light chain's molecular weight, you can come here and chain no, number one will show the light chain. You can select this to chain two and you can see the molecular weight of the heavy chain. So again, this over here is for the total, so for all the proteins that are in the FASTA file, the individual chains. And over here is where you can see the individual masses for each independent chain. Now, to add static modifications, you can simply double click on a residue. So I'm going to click on uh, cysteine. And when you do this, you want to put your cursor to the left of the residue and double click. This dialog, dialog box will appear. And when this pops up, you can see that it's uh, residue specific. So in this case, I clicked on a cysteine. So you'll see the residue that's highlighted here is cysteines. And I have side chain option modifications because this is not the N or C terminal. So I can select from the list. I will pick um, this modification. You can see the masses. And I'm gonna apply this to all, all cysteines I want modified. So then I can click OK and you'll notice that all the cysteines have turned because they're all statically modified, so they're all being highlighted. If you want to add an N-terminal modification, you could double click here, and now you'll see that the N-terminal modification is available, so you can select it. I'm not going to apply to all, I'm just going to click OK just to add one. And so now you can see that this N-terminal of the heavy, heavy chain is now modified. To remove a static modification, you double click, hit clear, and now it's gone. Okay, so next, after you've added static modifications, you may want to add variable modifications. So we can come here to the variable modifications section. The software has um, some defaults. So it, first of all, this is divided up by um, different locations on the protein sequence. So you have your N terminus, you have your C terminal section, and then you have your side chain section as well. You can add these by just clicking and hit click add. So whatever is over here on the right hand side will be used for searching, and then you can click to remove. Now the software does have some default modifications that we've actually added in, and you can access that list by clicking here. And you can scroll down and you can customize this list and create your own default list. What we recommend are highlighted in blue, but you could choose any um, of these modifications that we actually have. 
So the way you use the default list is you can come in and you just click on the default modifications and it will automatically load whatever you've selected up above here. So there's a quick way to add multiple modifications at one time if you're using you know, the, this common group of modifications. So once you have your default modifications loaded into the software, you can also choose if you um, would like to do an end glycan search. You can choose um, two different types. So we have a CHO database and we have a human database. I believe it's over uh, 200 uh, different glycans that we will actually search in the software. And this can be done for intact or peptide mapping experiments. And here you have the maximum number of modifications to search. Now if you want to add a custom modification, you can easily do that by clicking Modification Editor. You can come in here, you can add again, it's broken up by N-terminal, C-terminal, or sidechain. And you add a custom modification. You can name the modification. You, speak, you can um, pick the specific residue. You can add in the mass of the modification. This is the monoisotopic mass, and this would be the average mass. And then you hit OK. Now when you've done that, a custom uh, modification will show up in purple. Custom modifications can also be assigned to your default modification list. So if you see here, we have an example. So we can save this. Now if we go back to the software, to the variable modification section, I can load default modifications and you'll see now that our custom one is there as well. So it's very quick for adding information to the software. One other thing you can do uh, in the protein sequence editor page is you can add disulfide linkages. And this will be used for intact analysis, uh, not for peptide mapping analysis at this time, but in order to do that you can link your cysteines above in the uh, protein sequence map. So let me remove um, some of the static modifications that I have so I can show you how that's done. So in order to do that I simply double click and I hit clear and it will clear those. So to add disulfide bond um, linkages you simply right click create link click on another cysteine, right click, bridge link. And what will happen is the software will display the link and the chain numbers here at the bottom and as you link them to, together. So you can see chain 1 is linked the residue cysteine at 23 and chain 1 residue at 93. And you can go through and link together um, all of the cysteines in your protein. And the molecular weight of the protein will change accordingly as you link together uh, the disulfide bonds. Uh, please find the disulfide bond help video for more details on how to do uh, disulfide bond experiments. So now that we've uh, brought this information in, we could save. And this will automatically, if we scroll down, it will automatically add our protein sequence to our protein sequence manager. You could also save as a new, so you can change the name, and you can uh, custom name this if you want to use a different name than what was in the FASTA file. Okay, say OK, and you close and cancel out, or you can use the red X button to close this. And now you can see that you have your protein sequence in, in the actual manager. If you decide you'd like to edit this, you can just simply edit the manager, highlight the one you want to edit, hit edit, and then the information will pop back up. Okay, thank you.